Hello and welcome everyone to another video on the channel. Today we're going to take a look at the Call of Duty Vanguard settings for PC. So I know a lot of people are going to be new to PC this time around with Call of Duty. A lot of people have been hopping over to the PC wagon and just, you know, getting the better frame rates, getting that FOV slider, which I believe is actually on console this time around. But the community definitely has been hopping over and I think a lot of people could benefit from just having a video that explains some of these settings and just talks about what you guys should be looking at. I am running, I am running an RTX 3080 in my build. Uh, so I do understand what it's like to have a lower end graphics card. So by no means am I going to dismiss the fact that people are on, you know, probably 1060 Ti's or 2070's, 2060's. Those are all very common cards. So I'm going to talk about what you guys should be looking forward to. And definitely the people on the higher end cards like 2080's, 3080's, 3070's, 3060's. We're going to talk about some of the settings that you guys should look out for as well. So anyways, before we do hop in, if you guys like the video, don't forget to like the video. And if you guys want to subscribe for more Call of Duty content, I'd greatly appreciate that. With that being said, we're just going to jump right in. VSync, pretty self-explanatory. This basically limits the refresh rate of the game to that of your monitor. So it's like a hard cap. So you have a 60 hertz monitor, 60 FPS, 144 hertz monitor, 144 FPS. This completely eliminates screen tearing at the cost of input lag. It's a first person shooter. I do not recommend having this on period. And you could set your own custom frame rate limit. I personally recommend if you're on 60 hertz, you can limit it to 20 hertz above what your monitors can support. So if you have like a, a 60 hertz monitor, just do 80 hertz and then, or do 80 FPS and then everything else for uh, every other, you know, 144, 240, stuff like that. I'm at 250, I have a 144 hertz monitor. Honestly, I really don't care about, uh, about it because once again, I do have a, one, or a uh, RTX 3080. So none of this really matters to me. If you're somebody who likes to minimize the game and doesn't have much processing power on the side and you want to like open up Google Chrome while you're in the middle of playing the game, then you definitely want this frame rate limit to be a lot lower uh, when you're tabbed out of the game so you don't cause any lag on your PC. And uh, that's pretty much it for this tab, I think, besides the on-demand texture streaming. The only people that I recommend turn this off are people who have hard capped internet speeds. And by that, I, I don't know if there's many companies out there that still do it, but uh, you pay for a certain amount of data every month for your internet. If you have that, turn this off. This will absolutely eat your internet speeds. I've been playing the game for two hours and I have a 13 gigabyte uh, download off of these textures. Uh, I might turn it off. I'm not too sure. It's not a big deal for me. But uh, I do need to look more into this texture streaming because it is new tech that Call of Duty has been messing with. Anyways, hopping over to the quality section of the game. This is going to be the biggest tab. You're always going to want your re render resolution to be at 100% and match that of your actual monitor. The game does have a bunch of different presets for you. Uh, I, but I do recommend obviously going through and messing around with things. If you are on a lower res or a lower end graphics card that is not recommended, so it's like under like a 1070, it's like a 1060 or a 1050, I definitely recommend using dynamic resolution to ensure that you always get the target FPS that you want. Uh, this is a very helpful tool for lower end system. Uh, systems, you can put it at 80%, 70%, really mess around with it. All it really does is it lowers the resolution of the game in order to hit a certain target. Consoles use this all the time. It's really good tech for you guys on the lower end systems. Now, this is the part of the video that I really want to exaggerate with people because a lot of people do not understand this. There are a ton of people out there that have 2070s, 2080s, 3080s, 3070s, this is for you high-end people, even medium-end people, please do not assume that putting the game at the lowest texture settings is going to help your FPS amazingly. It's not. You have literally between 6 to 10 gigabytes of VRAM, which is the stuff that it's showing right on the side here on this bar. Utilize it, get a better looking game, it's still going to look sharp. It's still going to look clear. There is no reason to have a $2,000 PC and not mess around with this. I highly recommend using medium or high, depending on what kind of card you have and keeping to that VRAM budget, uh, budget and at least staying within 70 to 80% of the total VRAM of your card. So with texture resolution, if I was on like a 2080, high. If I was on a 2070, high. 2060, you could do medium. 
and if you I didn't even know there was a very low setting but if you're on a super low car you could do very low but definitely mess around with this this is not something that you want to just you know put immediately to very low and just assume that you're gonna have pure clarity it just doesn't work like that make sure you're getting the best uh, bang out of your actual graphics card Texture filtering, this isn't too big of a uh, tax. It's just the level of detail of surfaces when viewed at an angle. So you can see a little bit of a preview here. This is nothing nuts. You can kind of set it to medium or high depending on what kind of card you're on. Lower end, definitely medium. This isn't too taxing. Particle quality, this is nothing nuts either. Uh, basically, if for visibility sake, if you want to see less particle effects or if you want the particle effect to be less detailed and not as much in your face, you can really set this to low or medium if you wanted to. I'll probably stick around on medium. So if somebody throws a thermite or a frag grenade or something like that, you just have less of an effect on your screen. So this could be advantageous in certain situations for gameplay. So I'd recommend setting this to medium to low depending on what you're looking for. Particle resolutions is just sharpness in terms of particles like fire, snow, stuff like that. Uh, it's going to get more blurry depending on what setting you have and there's only high or low. It has a bit of an effect on VRAM. It says medium. So if I was on a 2060, uh, I'd probably still have this on high. But if I was still in the 10 series of graphics cards, you could probably put that to low. Uh, but do remember it is going to keep stuff blurry. Bullet impacts and sprays. Not a huge deal. Uh, this is kind of just more of your immersion for a lot of people. You could turn that on or off. It's a little bit of a benefit for being on PC. Shaders, this is all lighting. Uh, this is going to highly affect the color of the surfaces. Now, it says has slight impact, but it's pretty noticeable when you mess around with shaders. That's basically how the sun reflects on certain lightings. And you, you really want this to be high if you want to get the best kind of beauty out of the game. But you can always drop it to low. It's not too crazy, though, on the resolution. Tessellation is something that is a little unnecessary for gameplay, at least in my opinion. This is just the surfaces mainly of the ground and objects at a distance uh so what i like to do is i like to have the ground look really nice near my character so i turn it on for nearby only and if you have it on in general it just tessellates uh you know the whole map or the whole area in front of you it's kind of needless at least in gameplay purposes so i set that to nearby uh, level of distance detail, uh, this is pretty important. Uh, the game actually does give you, this is called an LOD for video games or level of detail, and this is a big taxation on the card itself. So I have mine set to standard, mostly because I really don't care for the uh, things at longer ranges to actually have a high level of detail. If you're on a high-end card and you want beauty, go ahead, go long. But most people, short and standard will be the best for level of detail distance range. Uh, standard is the sweet spot in the middle. You're going to want that. Your LODs are basically, as you go further down, I probably should have explained this uh, better, pretend your character's standing still, staring down a hallway. The further down that hallway and beyond you go, the game's going to downsample a lot of the textures in order to make sure that you have the highest FPS possible. And you're also, it's also dependent on your card as well, uh, LODs, or I wouldn't say dependent on your card, but it's dependent on what you set it to. And you're going to want to make sure that this is set to whatever card you have. So nearby, you're always going to want to have it on high regardless. You want to make sure that the level of detail of surfaces around you are high. So you have a nice little awareness and you're playing the game. Distant, if you're on a lower end card, set that to low. Further out, uh, I think this game should prioritize player models over anything else. So you will have blurry buildings and blurry textures at, at range, but you still will have prioritized character models if this game works the way I think it does. A lot of games always prioritize the character models at range, so you should always see the character regardless of your level of detail for the distant objects and surfaces. Like this statue, you can see a big difference of the level of detail from the left to the right. Same thing for clutter draw distance. This is something you could set to low as well. This is just small ground elements. So this goes back to that tessellation option that I have for nearby only. This is just stuff on the ground for in details. You could turn this to low if you have a mid-end card and get a little extra, extra boost out of it. It's nothing crazy. This isn't something you're going to notice in general gameplay. 
oops, my bad. Unless you are someone who's very nitpicky. Volumetric quality level, this is very taxing on your graphics card. Uh, this is lighting, fog, and clouds. Uh, actually, I'm going to put mine down as well. This is just for lighting, and it's for a lot of the finer details in the game. Uh, this is something that if you're on a media or on a low-end graphics card, I'd immediately put to low. This is nothing that you want to have on high. Screen space shadows, if you're on a low uh, graphics card, again, off immediately. This is a lot of uh, finer details in your view. So you could do local shadows only, which are just the shadows that you can immediately see. And this is something uh, y you'll get that effect on nearby and you could just have on and it'll be on for the whole game. And that's that goes back to that LOD thing I was just talking about. Shadow map resolution. This is another one. It says effect on VRAM is pretty high. And I also believe this has a bit of a CPU impact. Uh, this is going to be something that you shouldn't really need to care about much. It's going to be set to ultra for a lot of people, but as you can see, this takes up a decent amount of VRAM. I would recommend setting this to low or medium. You don't need that detailed of shadows. You just need to know that there's a player nearby with their shadow. So medium is plenty. You don't need to go anywhere higher than that. Distant sunlight shadows, this is cascades, this is more detail, more of that finer detail that I was talking about before. If you're on a 2070, 2080, 2060 even, you can keep this on high. Once again, if you're on a lower card, just put that to low. This is all just caching. I would recommend putting the sun shadows and the spot shadows always on. This will speed up that rendering of future frames. So if you have a bit of a RAM budget and you are over or you're close to over, make sure you turn other settings on or off, lower, lower them or turn them off in order to save some uh, VRAM usage for these two settings. This is going to be the cache size as well for the spotlight shadows. This is just going to make it for on your card how much cash it's going to take up for these spot shadows, which is going to be this setting down here to just be spotlight shadows. I don't really understand this one too much, uh, but uh, definitely set that to low if you're not on a, a high-end card. Particle lighting, this one's interesting. This is a lot of how particles reflect on other surfaces. Uh, this is a big one when it comes to explosions and hallways. You can see that uh, the reflection of the actual particles are kind of reflecting off the wall and it's going down here onto the floor. Uh, this is nothing too crazy, but once again, this is probably something that you're going to want to set to medium to high during gameplay in order to ensure that you are, uh, it's not too distracting basically is what I'm trying to say. All right, so ambient occlusion is just adding soft shadows intersecting with each other to create depth. It's just little shadows to make sure that things look like they're closer or are more realistic, basically. This is nothing that uh, is too taxing, but honestly, it does not impact gameplay that much at all unless you're in the campaign and you're looking for an immersive experience. You could set this to off. For all I care, uh, dynamic options and static op uh, objects are different. Static objects are like this stuff sitting on the ground and dynamic objects would be like moving player models and uh, like like flags and stuff like that. Uh, you could set this to off. It's not that big of a deal and it will probably save you just a bit of VRAM, uh, especially on those lower and medium end cards. This is nothing crazy in gameplay. You will not notice this. Trust me, you will not notice that in gameplay. Screen Screen space reflections, uh, this is just reflecting off of surfaces. This is nothing crazy. I believe this is CPU bound. This is a pretty CPU intensive uh, kind of uh, protocol. So if you do uh, want this on, just make sure you have a pretty decent CPU. It might uh, knock it down just a little bit. I like mine on medium. I don't need the reflections to be super crisp. Uh, once again, there's an off too as well. Uh, I recommend having it on uh, a little bit. It just makes the game just look a little bit prettier and I'm the type of person who likes prettier. I honestly, DLSS, uh, this is a big one. This is going to improve all of this drastically. DLSS basically gives you the, it gives you better resolution. Uh, well, it says it right here. It uses AI super resolution to provide the highest possible frame rate at maximum graphic settings. So basically, it will downsample a lot of the graphic fidelity that you have in order to maintain performance, balance, or quality. Uh, 
I'm at 1440p or 2K, so it does recommend quality for me, and then it has balance between performance and gameplay, and then performance. If you are on a bad graphics card or a low-end graphics card, put this baby on performance. You will notice that the game gets blurrier, but this will significantly higher your FPS. Now, balanced, if you're on somebody like a, like a 1070, 1070 Ti, 1080, you could probably get away with balanced and quality. Don't even try that unless you're on a better card. Uh, Overall, I would go with performance or balance. That's probably the best too. I have it off. If you're on a high-end graphics card, you do not need DLSS. If the game runs higher than what your actual PC or what your actual monitor is capable of displaying, you don't need to push the PC any further. You don't need 300 FPS all the time. Just turn off DLSS and enjoy the increased fidelity and increased performance and just increased look of your game. You don't want to sacrifice any graphical kind of fidelity at all if you're already hitting 144 hertz or 60 hertz. It's just not necessary at all. This is AMD's uh, Fidelity Super Resolution. I don't know much about this. I would highly recommend that you guys look this up yourselves. I'm an, an Intel guy. I know I said this is the best uh, kind of... Uh, you know, uh, overview for all of the, uh, stuff in the game, but I, I, I don't know much about Fidelity FX, so I'm not even going to bother. I, I'm just going to admit that I, I don't have an AMD graphics or AMD, uh, CPU anymore or graphics card. So this doesn't even apply to me. Uh, anti-aliasing. This is not much on VRAM, but you're definitely going to want some type of anti-aliasing. Filmic SMAA is going to smooth out those... So both of these are going to smooth out jagged edges, which is something you definitely want. You want anti-aliasing, but Filmatic is going to make it a little more grainier. So that's what they mean by visual noise. So you would set that to SMAA T2X if you don't like any type of visual noise being that grainy kind of look. Uh, another setting that you guys immediately want to turn off is depth of field. This is on consoles as well. You don't want to aim down sights and have your surroundings blurred out. Just turn that off. I don't think it has any type of... Uh, this is has nothing to do with performance. This just has to do with your gameplay. Turn that off. Last up, we've got the field of view. We've also got the ADS field of view. Uh, I have to look at this again. Uh, affected or independent. Uh, I think it's affected is the meta one to go with. I think it copied and pasted what I had in Warzone. And then it's 110 FOV for me. Obviously, you can customize that to whatever. If you're getting an, uh, any type of FPS dips on a medium end to low end card, then probably lower it a little bit. Not everyone can handle 110 FOV. You can go down 110, 100. That's still way better than what console gets. Or uh, actually, once again, I forgot. Uh, the consoles do get that FOV slider, but regardless, they're playing at 60 FPS. Camera movement, uh, this is camera shake, uh, you could turn that off to least, uh, I should have had it on least this whole time, definitely all the way down, it's going to take off that the camera bob, motion blur, both of them off, nobody wants motion blur, it's a terrible setting, I still don't know why it's on by default in any game, and Nvidia reflex low, uh, low latency, this is huge, on plus boost, trust me, on plus boost. Make sure you are running low, la low latency on video reflex. You will get much more responsiveness when you are actually playing the game and you are using a gamepad or a mouse and keyboard. You need that responsiveness. Anyways, guys, feel free to comment down below if you have any questions about settings for PC. I'm just explaining uh, you know, a lot of the stuff that you guys should be running. Do not run the game on low for everything if you have a high-end card. Do not run it low on everything if you have a low-end card. Uh, you don't need to just make sure you stay within this VRAM usage cache and make sure that the game is running at a decent frame rate and mess around with the settings really tweak around there is no one size fits all for everyone if you want to go I've already explained or aforementioned if you want to get better beauty I've given you guys some examples of what settings will give you beauty and what settings will just give you performance and uh, extra added benefits anyways with that being said guys let me know in the comments down below what you guys think and I'll see you later